can resist. My name is Sam Actigwili, and I am one of your organizers today. Countless thanks to everyone who came together, all of you, to make this happen because we are channeling our outrage into action. I also need to thank my mom, who is here today, for choosing to be a mother to me. The potential overturning of Roe, a long-standing precedent, would be devastating to our right to privacy and will reverberate across the country in affecting people in significant ways entirely unrelated to actual abortion procedures. We know for a fact that this is going to disproportionately burden black, brown, Asian, indigenous, Latinx people in possession of a uterus across the country. The greatest suffering is consistently inflicted upon the most marginalized. Enough of that shit! Me and my boyfriend at the time, now my husband, were only dating. I was 22 years old, wrapping up my first year of graduate school, and we were in no position to take on the care of another human being. One day I realized I was late, I took a test, and I got what was, for me, a terrifying result. I had been raised by an avidly pro-choice mother. <laughs> And as soon as I saw the positive on that test, I knew what I was going to do. I am privileged and I am grateful. And I do not remotely regret my abortion because I would not be here today if I had the responsibility of caring for an unplanned child. <laughs> Carrying a child should be a choice. Motherhood should be a choice. Yes. My body, my body, my body, my body. I thank you all so much for coming out. We have a fantastic program, and I would like to welcome up Sabrina Rezzi, who is one of our co organizers today. Good afternoon. I'm Sabrina Rezzi, president of the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Democratic Club. I want to wish all the moms here today a happy Mother's Day. And allow me to thank our speakers. We're expecting Representative Yvette Clark and former Representative Liz Holtzman, as well as Assembly Member Joanne Simon. Thank you so much. And I want to thank our partners at Rise Up for Abortion Rights and Brooklyn People's March. We named our club after Justice Ginsburg, a daughter of Brooklyn, because of her fearless perseverance and pursuit of equal justice under the law. And that applied to her views of abortion. She believed that gender equity under the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause was the essential argument for abortion rights, rather than a pregnant woman's right to privacy. And should the draft Supreme Court ruling written by Justice Samuel Alito become law, more than half of U.S. states are poised to outlaw most abortions. <laughs> Virtually overnight, this will take away the hard-earned right of women to decide our own futures. It will force unwanted pregnancies to come to term and particularly affect access to health care for the most marginalized communities, people without the resources to travel, and people of color. It will create additional barriers to safe abortion and criminalize those who seek it. Some GOP states, in fact, already are talking about murder charges for abortion seekers. Is this the America we want? No! no! More than 60% of Americans support Roe versus Wade, and only a quarter believe it should be overturned. This is an issue that unites not only Democrats, but Americans along the entire spectrum of political ideologies. So let's make it loud and clear. We don't need extremists deciding for us what we can do with our bodies. Right. 
The reversal of Roe versus Wade would be a blow to human rights in a nation that prides itself on being about freedom. And this onslaught is part of an orchestrated and well-funded assault on many of this nation's most cherished ideals. How did we end up here with three Supreme Court justices who swore that this landmark case was decided law? All appointed by the least popular and most radical president in modern history. With politicians who believe 12 year olds are too young to say yay, or learn about sex education but are old enough to birth a child of their own. This is a war on the rights of your daughters. And as a mom, I think it's critical that we provide a space to educate our children about this. Today's rally is for their future. Yes. Should it be overturned, Roe will have been the law of the land for less than half a century. The legacy of those seven justices who came together in the court's majority opinion, what Justice Brett Kavanaugh called settled law, will be shattered. We need to make sure that legacy is upheld and lights the way forward for generations to come. The fight has already come to us and we must be ready. I'd like, without further ado, to introduce our first speaker. Uh, I think we're gonna move to you, Representative Holtzman. We're fortunate to have so many strong female voices today, and our next speaker is no exception. Former Representative Liz Holtzman is a Harvard-educated lawyer who represented Central Brooklyn for half a century and was chair of the powerful House Judiciary Committee. She was one of the 15 women in her class of more than 500. When she was elected at 31, she became the youngest woman to serve in the House at the time. Rep. Holtzman co-founded the Congressional Caucus for Women's Issues. Let's give her a warm welcome. Thank you very much. This puts Brooklyn on the map. Ruth Bader Ginsburg puts Brooklyn on the map. The principles she stood for put Brooklyn on the map. We are here today because we stand for the freedom and the personhood and the autonomy of America's women. Because if you can take and control the bodies of more than half the people in this country, whose body is safe, whose personhood is safe, whose ideals are safe, whose families are safe. This is a day to honor mothers. And we honor them. But what kind of honoring of mothers is it when these ayatollahs on the Supreme Court want to put them in a burqa. Yeah. What are we talking about? They've been waiting 50 years, 50 years to do away with Brown versus Board of Education, 50 years to do away with Roe versus Wade, and we don't know what's next. The Justice Alito said in his vote, yes, said in his opinion, which is a disgrace, he couldn't find any real harms that real women were going to confront. He doesn't understand America's women. He has contempt for America's women. But what he did, I don't know how many of you know it, cite for support three, judge, three jurists or commentators on the law who did not believe in a woman's personhood. One of them wrote a commentary that said women could be beaten by their husbands with impunity just so long as the stick was no wider than his thumb. That's an authority that is cited by a Supreme Court justice. That's why I called it Ayatollah. He has to go back to the 16th century to find someone who supports these views. We are not going back. We're not going back to the 16th century. We're not going back to the time that women were property of their husbands. We're not going back to the time that they weren't full human beings. We're not going back to the time that they couldn't vote. Our bodies are our bodies. They don't belong to the state of New York. They don't belong to the United States of America. They don't belong to the Ayatollahs on the Supreme Court. They don't belong to the Ayatollahs. They don't belong to any religion. They belong to each and every. 